Matt Gamer Guy 1991 here to deliver a review of Homefront the Revolution. Never has a game's release been such grand evidence of what happens when a publisher pushes a developer to meet a deadline. Yet in the madness that would have destroyed any other game, something downright spectacular happened to a game that launched as an unpolished mess. It was given new life by dedicated developers that knew this game only needed a bit of love and care to bring out its true greatness. Homefront The Revolution is an open-world first-person shooter, which is a rebirth for developers' free radical design now known as Dam Buster Studios, and the Homefront series which started with such promise. As the game begins, you are introduced to a world in chaos. North Korea in this universe experienced the tech boom that took place in Silicon Valley in the real world. This led to North Korea creating a company known as Apex, which is essentially Apple. They use their monopoly on the tech industry to install backdoors onto all their devices, which they use to launch a massive attack to seize control of the USA. A few years later, your character is part of a resistance to take back control of the city of Philadelphia. The setup is excellent and provides a powerful enemy for the lowly rebellion to take on. This leads to an impressive guerrilla warfare atmosphere, something that we have rarely seen and never in the way that Homefront the Revolution presents. After the game's cold open, you will spend around two hours really getting a feel for the controls and general gameplay mechanics. While movement and combat is not a far cry for most modern FPSs, it's how everything comes together that provides an experience which is fairly unique in the genre's landscape. While it inevitably feels similar to the latest entries in the Far Cry series, it's the context and setting that make the game feel more like Skyrim than any other shooter on the market. The real meat of this game is exploring a dilapidated, war-torn city and taking it back. You do this by scavenging for supplies and raiding military installations. Certain areas of the city are pure war zones, with the rebelling forces pushing back the opposition by raiding and taking control of key points on the map. Others still have people just trying to live their lives, and in these areas you must first inspire others to take up arms against their oppressors. To do this you rescue civilians from the evil Korean People's Army. You sabotage their power sources, you hack their infrastructure, and of course, you kill the ever-living shit out of them. This all brings your hearts and minds meters up, which will allow you to broadcast a message to inspire the people to rise up, and once the meter is full, they will all fight alongside you, which is quite impressive. I was surprised at how well the game's objective fit into the world's narrative. Every objective made me, f made me feel more immersed into this dark, gritty, war-torn landscape. The game furthers its impressive sense of immersion. With the visceral feeling that all in-game actions have, you will feel the weight of your bolt cutters when cutting through a pesky padlock, and the savage impact of your blade plunging into a guard's neck. And of course, the kickback from your trusty M4 during frenetic gun battles. You can lone wolf your way through the game with a stealth approach, or you could recruit some AI resistance members to back you up for an all-out assault. Not only is your approach up to you, but you can customize your weapons to your liking with a plethora of attachments. Each weapon has multiple modes to switch between, offering greater flexibility. The M4, for example, is capable of switching between a magnetic mine mode and a light machine gun variation. Each weapon has its own pros and cons, which means it really comes down to your playstyle, which will dictate your weapon preferences, as they're all satisfying and extremely functional. You can sprint, jump, and clamber over obstacles fairly well, though climbing and platforming can be a bit cumbersome. Still, during combat, you are able to move fluidly around, leading to some very exciting combat encounters. This is a game that is about staying constantly on the move. If you're stationary for too long, you're as good as dead. As far as providing realistic guerrilla warfare style combat, Homefront the Revolution is the first to really nail this kind of shooting gameplay, which really is what separates it from the set piece driven shooters that oversaturate the market today. The feeling of running headfirst into intense combat engagements, gun blazing, leveling the opposition, and then dashing away to hit another location is something that only a handful of other FPSs offer, and they don't quite pack the same punch that Homefront the Revolution does. Beyond all your weapons and gadgets, you also have access to motorbikes, which are quite useful. You can easily speed through each of the game's locales and hop off to engage in quick acts of sabotage, and then blaze off into the day or night, as the game has a natural day and night cycle along with dynamic weather effects. The game's visuals are of course extremely beautiful, given this is a game made on the Crytek engine, lighting effects are superb and characters animate well, yet at the game's launch there were quite a few visual bugs and glitches. 
The worst offender being the sluggish frame rate. The game was playable, but it was one of the roughest games I have played this generation. Nevertheless, the game was such a diamond in the rough due to its meticulous game design and a solid atmospheric foundation that it was still worth playing bugs and all. Thankfully, as of November 2016, the game's worst issues have all been corrected for the most part. The frame rate is now consistent in nearly all gameplay scenarios, although during the most hectic and bombastic on-screen actions, things will still occasionally slow down and also when the game is saving, but never to the extent it had before. Visual bugs are also so infrequent that I never noticed a single one. I have yet to even mention the game's interesting cooperative mode that has its own missions and characters. Basically, this is a campaign, but made even tougher and meant to be played with teamwork. Many labeled this game dead on arrival, yet they could not have been further from the truth. It is a shame that the publishers lacked the faith it would have taken to give this game more development time. Yet in spite of the obstacles in this game's path, it has surpassed them and done something few games have ever accomplished. It rose from the ashes and is not only playable, but a masterwork of the genre. I have never played a game with this kind of organic action before, and it is truly a diamond in the rough that can be had for as little as $20 on Amazon. If ever there was a game that was worth giving a chance, it's Homefront the Revolution. This was made by gamers who truly cared to deliver an experience that would be enthralling, captivating, engrossing, and above all else, fun as hell. The suspense and the thrills that I have had in this game excel any other FPS I have played in recent memory. And I do not say this lightly. I have played many a great first person shooters. Battlefield 1 was a terrific experience. Bioshock Infinite is always a great game, which was recently remastered. The new Call of Duty wasn't even half bad. But simply nothing has compared to the fun and excitement and to the brutal gritty action that Homefront the Revolution offers. This is truly a revolution in open world game design and it deserves to be recognized as such. Thank you very much for watching my review and keep up for more.